Hello everyone, today I want to talk about a 1966 spy movie called The Quiller Memorandum. It's George Siegel on the cover. Siegel had been in um, uh, Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, got an Academy Award uh, nomination. He had played the lead in King Rat. I think this is previous to the uh, Quiller. I think this is really his second uh, lead role in a movie. <clears throat> it's a uh, spy movie, but it's not a spy movie about the Soviet Union, which you would think it might be in 1966. It's a spy movie about ferreting out a cabal of neo-Nazis in Berlin. The film opens with a man walking on a isolated uh, street at nighttime. Uh, all you hear is his footsteps. You see him, he's very furtive. He approaches from a distance to the camera. You can't help being reminded about uh, uh, of the third, the ending of the third man in this scene, and that's exasperated by the by the musical score, a brilliant, haunting musical score from John Barry, and um, in the uh, in in the uh, in the printout that comes with this, it's a small little booklet. Uh, there's an essay by Julie Kergo, and she mentions that Barry was using a instrument called the cymbalum. I'm not sure I'm pronouncing it right, but it's a um, Eastern European instrument that's sort of in the same family as the zither that was used in uh, throughout the Third Man, and uh, it's just brilliantly done. He also Barry also uses a lot of harpsichords along with this in his score. The, as the man approaches the camera, he goes into a phone booth. And he is, as soon as he picks up the phone to dial his number, he's shot and killed. And this scene, this particular uh, street, is uh, duplicated towards the end of the film where we see George Siegel taking this same walk. The uh, subsequent scene, we're in uh, Berlin's Olympia Stadium where the Olympics were held in 1936. We learned that that man was a spy and George Siegel uh, is there to meet Alec Guinness, Siegel American, Guinness British. Uh, they want him to investigate the people that killed their spy. And uh, they've recruited him. He's supposed to be on vacation. He's reluctant. He seems reluctant to do it, but it's sort of implied because he knew the man who was shot that he takes on the job. And the, as they sit in this empty stadium, you see some tours going by. We look down to where Herr Hitler uh, sat, um, and we even hear the, the roar of the crowd, the Zeke Kyles. Uh, Alec Guinness explains to George Siegel about this neo-Nazi movement that he's being uh, brought on to ferret out. And uh, he, he says that, well, they don't wear brown shirts, brown shirts anymore. Nowadays, they look like everybody else, and he repeats the line twice, and it's certainly one of the points of the, the movie is of the insidious uh, nature of evil, that evil doesn't have to be a monster, it doesn't have to be a horrible-looking human being, it doesn't have to have uniforms, uh, it can look like everybody else. And the screenplay is by Harold Pinter, and this is really a Harold Pinter film. He was at the peak of his dramatic days, and he was uh, the, on the theater, and he was he was seen as a brilliant, unique new talent. Uh, he didn't appeal to everybody, and uh, I think the Quiller, the mixed reaction to Quiller, a lot of it has to do with Pinter bringing his own style to the film. So that Quiller comes out of nowhere at the end of the film. He goes back to nowhere. We don't really learn much about him. Uh, he's a he's arrogant. He's a loner. Uh, he he comes up against. He, neither, he doesn't like Guinness, Guinness doesn't like him, Guinness is like the manipulator, he's part of a team, a close-knit team, Quiller doesn't want to be a part of that, and uh, he, he is, but Quiller is also a man who is, who can improvise, and he can take on different identities, and he has to read the situation, uh, and, 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 and more importantly, he has to read people, and he's good at it, and even though he makes mistakes all along the way, he knows how to get himself out of it. And uh, he's also, George Siegel is also incredibly good, I think. He's always been an overlooked, underrated performer. And, and um, 
he's joined here by, as I said, Al Guinness, uh, uh, Max von Sydow, Senta Berger, uh, and Pinter's dialogue is, can be cryptic, elliptical. It's realistic dialogue, but it has pauses and it has, um, it, it repeats itself. And you have to have actors that are really committed to it to make, to give it its musical flow, its poetic nature. And these, these actors really do accomplish that and from different strains. And George Siegel was trained at the Actors Studio in New York. Alec Guinness was a um, part of the classical British uh, acting tradition. Uh, Max von Sydow out of uh, Ingmar Bergman movies. Senta Berger was, was uh, trained in German uh, theater. And, but they, they, they catch it, they catch all the the, uh, the the beauty, the the, the rhythm of, of Pinter's dialogue, and and Pinter, of course, was always uh, influenced by this kind of fascist instinct in people, the power that people want to exert over other people. Uh, that we shouldn't be complacent; that evil exists in the world. As a young man, he 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 was he was too young to fight in World War II, but he living in London, he understood the bombing. And uh, it, it made a deep impression on him, and it, it, it certainly uh, uh, it's, it certainly uh, is evident throughout uh, throughout the Quiller Memorandum. And what the what the film uh, the film looks great. It's it's uh, it, Irwin Hillier was the cinematographer, and he he had worked he had done the cinematography on some Michael Powell movies. Uh, I know where I'm going. Um, and the Canterbury Tales, and he, this is a color film, but he invested with kind of film noir type uh, cinematography in the interiors and some of the exteriors at night. Uh, he uses a brilliant uh, use of close-ups. Uh, there's very few close-ups in the movie, and of course, when you don't use many close-ups in a movie, when you do use them, they're extra dramatic, and they come, especially in the closing scene, they're, they're really effective. And uh, Max von Sydow plays the head of the uh, of the neo Nazis, and, and there's another there's there's a great interrogation scene of of Quiller where he's given a drug to make him uh, speak the truth, and uh, Quiller is draws on all his uh, his physical abilities, mental abilities to resist giving up any information. This is one of Pinner's uh, great scenes in this film. But I think the greatest scene really is at the end, uh, because although Quiller is uh, adept at reading people, he can't quite read Santa Berger's character. She's playing a school teacher in an elementary school. In this school, a, uh, a few months before, a uh, neo-Nazi has been, one of the teachers has been uncovered as a neo-Nazi. He goes to see if he can find some leads there. She speaks good English. A romance develops. Uh, he he pretends to be somebody he's not. Then he tells her who he is. Then she helps him. But Quiller is never quite sure, <laughs> even with the romance, whether she's on his side or the other side. And in in the ending, the coda, the the the, uh, the wrap up of the plot is rather perfunctory. There, and then he goes back to visit Senneberger at the school. He tries to read her, uh, what she's saying. Senator Berger is, is soft-spoken all, all through her scenes, and uh, she doesn't say much, but she says a lot with her eyes, her emotions, or with, she uses her eyes to conceal who she really is, to express who she really is. Uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a brilliant scene where, where n neither of them in this final scene say what they really mean. It, it, it's the melancholy. The haunting music by um, by John Barry uh, really contributes to what I think is the best ending I've ever seen in a Pinner film or a, a Pinner uh, uh, play in person. So overall, definitely recommend the Quiller Man Miranda, one of the great spy films of the '60s. I think it's one of the great movies of the 1960s and and one of uh, the great uh, screenplays by Harold Pinter. Okay, any uh, comments would be welcome, likes, subscriptions, and all that good sort of stuff. If not, I'll catch you guys next time.